Good morning, afternoon or evening and welcome to Fractionate View number 6. Now this one covers the 0 AD World Siege Specialists and it's a faction that not many people use to be honest. Now is that because they're difficult to use or is it because they're just a bit rubbish? Well, watch on as we explore the Macedonians. So the Macedonians are one of the Hellenic factions, which gives them access to some interesting Greek buildings, but as I've already mentioned, they're often ignored by players. So let's find out a little more and see if there are any obvious reasons that people overlook them. Now it's important to know that they're really strong against the Persians and other Greek factions, getting a 10% attack bonus, but they have a 5% attack reduction against the Romans, so probably best to avoid them if your enemy is from the Italian peninsula. They're also the only faction that has access to every type of siege weapon. They also have a hero that boosts these and a special building solely for their creation. For this reason, you want to get ready to siege weapon your opponent to death. Now, they have limited cavalry and infantry options though, with no swordsmen at all, and also no elephants. Now this means they're only able to defend against rams with other rams or one of their heroes. Now this is not a good spot to be in and seems very strange that a faction based around siege weapons would be so vulnerable to a particular siege weapon, but hey ho. And on the subject of troop types, half the available troops are mercenaries, meaning that metal is a key resource. So it's lucky that they offer their allies a 20% boost in selling prices at the market. In exchange for this bonus, maybe you can ask them for a little metal in return. And finally, territory is a really big thing for these guys. They take vast swathes of territory through their buildings and also one of their heroes. And this makes the siege workshop a particularly useful building, as it can be rebuilt frequently as the front line moves, ensuring that your supply lines don't get stretched. Your starting units are the most common pair, a skirmisher and a spearman. However, the spearman's a pikeman rather than the usual hoplite, which means it has higher pierce attack but reduced hack attack. This is compensated by the double armour values, and they can also be put into the syntagma formation, which gives a very strong defence from the front, although it's very slow and vulnerable from both the sides and the back. That said, if you're facing a mass of archers or skirmisher, this formation will soak up the enemy's projectiles while your own ranged soldiers fill them full of arrows. In terms of cavalry, your opener is a lancer, which is great for raiding and also gets a bonus attack against other cavalry. When phase 2 arrives, you have access to three mercenary troops, a slinger, an archer and cavalry skirmishers. All of these have 25 of their food cost exchanged for metal, meaning that if a map has high metal deposits, you can allocate less resource to farming and more to mining. So let's have a look at some of the unique and or interesting buildings that the Macedonians will offer. The first one we're going to look at is the Theatron, which is a building that increases your territory by 20% and is available to all the Greek factions. Now you can only build one, but if you are playing against another Greek faction, which remember you will have a bonus against, and you manage to capture their Theatron, then it's happy days as this 20% will compound. The Library is another option, and this is available to a number of factions and is very useful and, in my opinion, is a criminally underappreciated building. It reduces the cost of upgrades by 10%, and that is all upgrades, so make the most of this. It means you can afford to equip your troops better, get resources more quickly, and most importantly with the Macedonians, supercharge your siege weapons. Finally, it also gives a territory upgrade that we'll come to later in the video. And the siege workshop is the final one, and the most interesting. It's a great building as it's so cheap, at just 300 wood and no stone. This means that in most maps it will give you a great opportunity to spam out siege weapons while your opponent will only be using their fortress. This means that you can build them closer to the front line and also build more as the front line moves in the same way that you might with barracks. Rather than where fortresses being so expensive, the idea of building four or five of them is just not an option. With regards to siege weapons, as we've already said, they're the only faction that has access to all four of these. And also I've already said that they don't get them from the fortress, which is another unique feature. However, other than the building itself, there's nothing really special about any of these that makes them better than other factions' versions. Therefore, if you want an overview of the siege weapons, go and check out my siege weapons marginal tips video. However, that said, they are going to make up a disproportionate amount of your army compared to other factions, due to the fact it's possible to create more of them. So, if you're in team games, be prepared to provide plenty of siege support to your teammates, infantry and cavalry. When it comes to champions, I have to say the Macedonians are a little short. 
Now the only two that you have available are a Lancer Cavalry and a Spearman. The Spearman is also your only soldier that you have with decent hack attack, so they're important if you want to defend against rams. Other than that, these two are fairly standard and have very little to shout about in comparison to other factions' much more interesting champion array. Up next we have my favourite part of these faction overview videos, the heroes. So Alexander the Great is probably the most famous of all the heroes, even in the whole game. And he's also your only route to getting a cavalry swordsman. He'll give you a 10% increase in territory and also reduce the rate at which enemies replenish their health while they're garrisoned in the civic centre by 50%. This means it's more difficult for them to defend their base. However, I'm not a big fan of this, even though the 10% territory bonus can well surprise an enemy when they're building a structure only to find it suddenly appear inside your territory. Philip II is a cavalry lancer, which makes him an excellent anti-cavalry and raiding hero. He also gives a plus 20% attack and plus 2 capture bonus for champions that are within 60 metres. This makes him most useful then when he's leading a group of champion cavalry around the map causing mayhem. And finally we have Demetrius the Besieger. He's an infantry swordsman who gives a 20% attack, 10% range and plus 1 armour bonus for siege engines. This makes him most useful when he's either garrisoned in a ram or siege tower, or sat behind the front line commanding a group of catapults and bolt shooters. This makes him my favourite champion for the Macedonians, as the fact that siege weapons are their bread and butter make someone that can boost these units' ability a tremendous thing. So then, upgrades. Well, there's not much to talk about, so let's just get on with it. Now first up we have Metropolis. It's available from the library and it gives a bonus that doubles the health, capture points and defence arrows for your civic centres. Now this is actually a really worthy upgrade and it's often overlooked by factions that have access to this building, namely the Seleucids and the Ptolemies. So if you can spare the resources then I'd say use it. It can be the difference between winning and losing in the late game, especially if you come under sustained ram attack. Now the only other upgrade of note is completely unique to Macedon and this is Silver Shields. It upgrades your champion infantry from shield bearers to silver shields. This simply increases their pierce and hack armour from 8 to 9 and increases their health from 200 to 220, but it offers nothing in terms of their attack value. So I guess it's something you may want to consider, but for me this isn't much of an improvement for the extortionate cost of 1000 metal. To be honest I'd rather have a load of bolt shooters or the general attack armour upgrades that you get from the blacksmith. And finally we have the usual upgrade for factions that have mercenaries, expertise in war. This promotes these guys to advanced rank. It's a decent upgrade, but be aware that it reduces their resource collecting abilities massively, and this can be a real issue if these end up comprising the majority of your army. And with that we almost have another faction overview down, so as per usual, let's have a look at the most important attributes of the faction that we've learned about, and think about some strategies that you may want to implement to use them to their potential. Now number one, you do start with the Lancer Cavalry, so you must use these to harass your opponent early. This is going to slow down their development, and this is very important for two reasons. A. The Macedonians are not a faction that lend themselves to fast development. So, in order to have a chance, you're going to need to bring your opponent down to your level. And this is especially important as B. Your infantry are just frankly a bit rubbish, and they're going to be very vulnerable to opponent siege weapons, especially rams. So, the Celtic factions, for example, will just wipe the floor with you if you let them hit phase 3 before you do, as their rams will be virtually unstoppable. Anyway, back on to the rest of the things, we've got number two here, is that despite what I've just said, if you can reach phase three, you will unleash a torrent of siege attacks, making your army incredibly formidable. So getting there first, or at least at a similar time, is pretty much essential. Also, you're going to want to make sure that you have plenty of mineral resources. This will allow you to build sufficient siege weapons and champions to compensate for your limited infantry. And our final point is that pick a hero in advance that's going to suit your playstyle and also the map to be fair. So if you want to destroy your enemy's economy and kill them off that way, then Philip II accompanying a load of cavalry is probably your man. However, if you prefer a slow grinding siege attack, then Demetrius the Besieger will be the guy for you. And with that, I'll bid you adieu. Now thanks for watching and accepting my recent hiatus from the Zero AD video world, and I'll see you soon when the videos become frequent and regular again. Adeus.